So for this video, we'll be doing a recap on loads. Um, these are really important uh, when we're analysing beams or structures or anything like that. Um, so it's good to good to know um, how they work. So there's two different types of loads. There's concentrated and distributed. So concentrated acts at a certain point. As you can see here, it's one force acting at a single point. So this could either be on an angle, so it could be like this, let's say at 30 degrees, and then we can break this up into our X and Y components, um, as I have done here, the F, um, F sin 30 and F cos 30. Um, so these act at the same point as F, although they, they look like they're acting at different points, they act at the same singular point here and the same singular point here. So this is pretty straightforward. You just have to break them up into whatever coordinate you're using. Here it's, it's X and Y. Okay. So for distributed loads, distributed loads are, are where the force changes across the X axis. And this can be anything. So you can see this, this force shape here. It's, it's, it's very strange. Um, usually you'd be giving, given like a, a more reasonable one, like a, like a square or a triangle or, or some sort of combination of the two. So to do this, we find out the force and we have to find out the area. No, I mean, sorry, the force and then um, where it actually acts. So the force is the area under this graph here. Um, so you can integrate it if it's a strange thing like this, or you can just do basic area formulas. Um, so this is going from 0 to L, um, integrating Wx. So yeah, it, it equals the area under the graph. If you have several different uh, sections, or it's, it's, it's reasonably regular, you can break it up into little bits to find the, the center of the whole thing. So, for example, if you have one, two, three, four, like things as I have here, the xi is the centroid of the first one, and ai is the, the area of the first one. And so you want to sum up all the, the areas and all the centroids of each individual one, and then divide it by the, the total area of all of it. This is a better written as this, so the integral of x with respect to da, and then the, over the integral of da. So I'll just do some short examples on this just to um, just to clear up anything if you have any questions. So I'm only going to concentrate on the distributed loads and not do concentrated loads because they're relatively easy and um, yeah. So a distributed load could be something like this is this is a different distributed load that could be quite difficult. And you can't just find one. So So we have a whole distributed load like this. And we're given Wx equals hundred up here, hundred kilonewtons, and Wx equals um, thirty kilonewtons. So we can break this up into the two little bits. Um, so I'll show you how to do that by uh, superpositioning. So by superpositioning, this is the equivalent of doing this, broken up into the square one, or the rectangle even. Um, so that's Wx equals 30. And breaking up into, so plus the triangle one. So this length here would be 100 minus the 30, so we want this here. So that's uh, 70. Alrighty. So once we have this, we want to find the centroid of this. So we know that for a rectangle, the centroid is going to be in the center. Um, so like right here, in the middle. So we know that the force is acting there. For this one, see from standard tables that the force acts two thirds of the way along. So 
All right, two and three. I'm right in this one. 1.5. Oh, so half, half, two and three. Okay, so that's because the centroids there, it's the centroids two thirds along, centroids um, equal distance from either end, and so that's where the force acts. So the force of this one, let's give this a value of L, and this a value of L, because they're the same distance. We will get um, force, this one equals the height which is 30 kilonewtons times the length so it equals 30 L for this one we have P equals um, half times length times height so uh, we get 40 sorry 35 L Okay, so now that we have this, we can put this all together. So this one is 30L, this one is 35L, and so now at the end we have this whole distributed load that we had at the start. We have at the start. So this is the equivalent, I'll write in the values. This is the equivalent of having two different forces acting on this. One in the middle, 30L, and one two thirds of the way along, 35L. So that's how you break up a, um, a distributed load.